Welcome to the High Rise Podcast, presented by Headset, the leading data and analytics company for the cannabis industry. Emily, have you ever found yourself in Alabama? No, Sai, I have not. Uh, Morgan's been there because we have a, com- a company called Bascor, which manufactures uh, hemp for like textiles and, and things like that. Long time down there, but uh, no, have you? Not personally. No. Well, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a mere 30 years ago, I was a, uh, a cadet or something like that at, <laughs> <laughs> at Space Camp. Um, yeah, Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, this was, I guess, early 90s. Uh, it was all the rage. I was very excited to go. Uh, didn't actually get to go to space, but got to do all the space-like stuff, like that um, that device where they spin you around, went on a simulated mission. I don't know, it was pretty cool. You're there for a week with a bunch of other nerds. <laughs> there was a movie in the 80s, Space Camp, that I remember, and those kids end up in a space shuttle that's on a launch pad and they end up in space. Mm-hmm. No, nothing like that happened, unfortunately, while I was there. But um, it was a good time. But I haven't been back to Alabama since. And I think I might actually have a reason now. Yeah, you have a new reason to get high in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. You had to. You had to. So the, the big news is that Alabama uh, joins other southern states and finally rolling out their medical program. Um, I think it was signed into law in 2021. I think licenses started getting, um, or applications for licenses started coming together in 2022. And now we're seeing actually who's winning the licenses, right? I think that was this week's news. So I wanted to talk about that a bit and just kind of cover what what to expect for this uh, market in the South. Let's do it. Yeah, so kind of the rules and regs around this, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like to... To even have applied, you need to, the majority owners have to be Alabama residents for something like 15 years. Uh, apparently, they were reserving 25% of the licenses for minority owned um, organizations. I'm not sure if, if, you know, these license holders that have been issued are, or 25% of them are minority owned. I haven't really looked at who's gotten the licenses so much. I know there are some names in there mm-hmm. that, that we might recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, But that's not unlike markets like Washington, I think, with residency laws. Markets like Oregon, I think, had residency laws. Um, There are, what is it going to be, 21 licenses that were issued. And Mm -hmm. of that, nine of those companies are going to be dispensary licenses or have dispensary licenses, and they can open 37. Mm -hmm. 37 dispensaries is what I saw. Weird number. I don't know why 37. Got to start somewhere, I guess. guess. Yeah. And four of those are full vertical licenses, uh, too. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. And then I was looking at uh, the, the cities that have approved um, this, and it looks like Birmingham, Huntsville, Mobile, Mobile, mm-hmm. Montgomery, Tuscaloosa. So the, the relatively, I mean, those are the larger cities in Alabama have approved it. So we'll start seeing dispensaries there. So it's all good. Um what else? Conditions. So it seems like it's pretty flexible, more than a dozen conditions. Like mm-hmm. the ones that you expect are the ones that you see pretty much everywhere. Um, things like related to cancer treatment, HIV, AIDS. Uh, but at the end, it has the conditions causing chronic or intractable pain. Mm-hmm. Right? And that generally is kind of a good opening to be able to expand access into... Um, into more, more patients, right? Not so limited when you have that, right? Because I mean, that could apply to to a ton of things. Yep. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the conditions here versus a state like Texas, it's already much more forgiving and open, and so it gives the physicians more opportunities to f- to find a way to potentially um, allow for their patients to try this path instead of other more traditional pharma. Um, and I think that. Yeah, I mean, even the PTSD, is, it's really important. Um, a- actually, every single condition here, I laud them for this because um, anyone who knows Morgan and I knows we, we have the cancer history with our parents, and that's a really important reason from even a palliative care to make life quality of life better. Um, 
And then things like nausea and weight loss. I mean, I'm basically nauseous all the time in cannabis <laughs> and, and it does, or in this industry and cannabis does help. So, and PTSD, I mean, that was what the Canadian program really launched with back in the day. I remember Health Canada used to send out barcodes to especially veterans with PTSD and then they were invited to have access to these health lines to talk to doctors and understand what this would be like. And Health Canada and the government of Canada was very supportive of that. And I remember that from 2014, it was really a key launching point. And it did prove a decline in the use of opioids for PTSD around uh, veteran populations and improved quality of life. So I'm happy to see this. Um, you know, I think that Alabama is a a proud state and a state with a deep history of agriculture and manufacturing. Like you do have um, some of the auto facilities are down there. Sure. Um, they've had industrial hemp for a while, actually. It's a really interesting state when you consider uh, that Jeff Sessions, you know, one of our, our most, uh, <laughs> one of the most villainous names in cannabis for rescinding our coal memo. That's right. He was uh, from Alabama. He's from he? Alabama. Amazing. So I kind of love this. I feel like it's like tapping him on the back, kind of saying, hey, we're here. Um, so, you know, it is quite restricted in terms of form factors to start. And I, I there's a couple of curious aspects to this. But yeah, um, it was funny. Aaron Miles from Verano this morning made a really great joke. We were ta- I was like, hey, congrats, because Verano was one of the winners of the full vertical, I believe. And I said, hey, congrats. And he said, um, someone this morning told me instead of, uh, I said, roll tide, right, man? And he said, hey, someone this morning told me that I got to go with it's now pre-roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was pretty brilliant at 7 a.m. But um, but actually, you can't go with pre-rolls. So That's do you right. want to <laughs> talk about it? <laughs> so <coughs> as flexible as it is on the condition side, um, the actual products that you can kind of dispense uh, are pretty limited. It looks like it's going to be pills, capsules, tinctures, uh, gelatinous cubes, <laughs> which <laughs> sounds so appetizing. I just try heaved so hard. <laughs> uh, did you see Triangle of Sadness? No, I didn't. Oh, I God. Didn't. Are there All right, gelatinous there's cubes? There, well, there's a gelatinous item regard, and then a boat and seasickness, and <laughs> I'll just leave it there. But actually, everybody should see that movie. It's pretty interesting commentary on society. But oh, my that's gosh. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> gelatinous cubes are allowed in Alabama. Uh, oils, creams, patches, suppositories, nebulizers, and liquids or oils for an inhaler. But what you may notice, that there's no pre-roll on here. No, no flour. flour. Even just, I think, edibles, like candies, anything like that is, is prohibited. I think right. gelatinous cubes are also known as gummies. Gummies, yeah. right, right. Oh, my God, gelatinous cubes. I wonder what the, I mean, at Headset, we need to start tracking gelatinous cubes yeah. maybe as a category <laughs> <laughs> versus just gummies. But I wonder what the difference is. I wonder if it's packaging, presentation, flavors. I mean, any, any idea? Yeah, well, I mean, we saw this morning that there was clarification. I guess it was actually yesterday. So the license, or Monday night. So the licenses were issued Monday. Um and it was interesting because they went into this closed session hearing and actually we were very dialed in on this and uh, Colin from the team was trying to get on. The Zoom crashed. Apparently they had a 100 person Zoom limit. They for not pay for like the they full didn't, <laughs> no, They did not invest in the, you know, like the bigger license for that specific hearing. But they did go into a closed session and apparently three of the... Um, I, judges, or I'm trying to remember the word for it, but three ab- abstained from the from the vote on this. Wow. There's some really interesting ways that this all went down. I'm very curious to see what will happen. I, almost every single market that has issued licenses has had lawsuits, and so it'll be curious to see. But the other thing on Monday that came out was that um, there would only be one flavor of gummies allowed, or I'm thinking those are the gelatinous cubes. Got to because there's no gummies on this list. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it, but I'm going to need some cannabis to undo the nausea of the <laughs> concept of a gelatinous cube. But the um, the only flavor they're allowing is peach. Peach. And I, I actually was curious. We didn't get to talk about this before, but you obviously have access to the data. I know, like, the guys at Sunburn look at this when they're formulating their gummies. Like, what are the best-selling flavors in the gummy category? And I think it's not peach. Mm. But apparently what was on the table was no flavor. 
And that would be, I don't even know how to even talk about what that would be like. Yeah. Chewing a gummy without a flavor, would that would be a gelatinous cube. Yeah, geez. Well, first off, why peach? Well, I was wondering, so someone who's, I guess, the editor of the oh, the local uh, Alabama paper there, a big one, he was hypothesizing that maybe it's one of the, the lesser desirable flavors. Or Some maybe... legislator there just hates peach candies. <laughs> He's like, if it's going to have to be a flavor, it's going to be peach. Yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't seem like it was clarified, but what do you what do you see in the data? I mean, I'm trying to remember. I used to know which the flavors of gummies that were the more... I think it's berry flavors are more popular. Probably. I or mean, is it, it citrus? Generally, it's like the mo- more common. And yeah, the berry, yeah. Like sell more because it's just more available. Yeah. I'm not sure. We, we can always pull the data... Uh, or maybe we could follow up on that and see where peach ranks because that could be interesting. We should do that. Yeah, way down the list. And also, we're talking about Alabama, not Georgia, <laughs> right? And it's like a Georgia peach. Like, Georgia's known for peaches. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's, like, the, the border there, some border towns that also mm-hmm. do big business in peach uh, peach sales, so they're trying <laughs> to get those into the gelatinous cubes or something. But it's <laughs> it is kind of strange. Like, the that is a crazy requirement that it can only be peach it feels so cannabis like jason wild tweeted about this it's like just name something else odd that we have to abide by in this right. industry and if please please someone send me a picture of the packaging if it has the label gelatinous cube on it i just <laughs> really want that for my files oh man so no no pre-roll no flour no vapor pens oils for an inhaler right oils for an inhaler is maybe the closest you're gonna yeah. get to uh, vape pen, I guess. I would be curious. I'm assuming it means there's no heat function if it's an inhaler versus a... But this is... I mean, that's a little bit like Texas. It does call it nebulizers. Yeah, I know. Which I'm invested in technology around that, so... Time to get to Alabama. Yeah, so maybe different <laughs> than nebulizers. Maybe it is more like a vape pen. It'll. We'll see. I'm sure everyone will, will push the boundaries as best they can. Yeah. At least I hope they do. Well, th- one thing's for sure is the cultivators there won't have to focus on bud porn. It's just going to be plants you grow to blast through processing. Um, so if I was a cultivator there or even a vertical, I'd be very mindful of my CapEx on um, on the build, on the grow, because you're just going to blast it through. Right. Yeah, you don't have to have, like, in California, you got to have, like, really pretty flower. Right. So... I feel like most of the medical markets that have started this way eventually give in and allow yeah. things like flour. Yeah. Right. Like that happened in Florida, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. Um, which are, you know, sizable markets. So, uh, you know, the good news, right, is this is opening up. It's cracking the door open. It, it basically finishes up the south, right, because we have Louisiana. We have Georgia. Mississippi. Mm-hmm, Mississippi. Uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. So that's good. So I, w- I want to yeah. kind of talk about, you know, where this fits in yeah. like size. Like, what can we expect in Alabama? Like, assuming, you know, this, I'm not sure when all this, uh, now that the licenses are issued, I don't know when the store, the dispensaries will be open. Yeah. Or production, maybe this year. Well, there's one other big critical step, which is, I believe, within 16 days of Monday, they have to be funded and show that they have the funding required. So they got the licenses, yeah. and now they have to prove funding. Yeah. Heck if I know. Um, I'm a, you know, like, for example, I know some folks who were going for licenses, they had, like, investors lined up with commitments ready to go if the license should be issued. And so then you would have to fund it at that point. So you probably, if anyone was prepared, and I'm assuming some some of these groups at least are, that they probably created what the terms would be of that investment and have their their funding backers lined up. I know there was a lot of big money behind some of these licenses. And you pointed out in our in our prep that there were 240 applications initially. I think as of Monday, they only had 38 that they had scored and reviewed. So a lot of groups fell out in the process. Um, you know, the team was digging in on, on some of the license applications that had been submitted 
And I'm so curious if this has happened in other markets, but apparently for that residency requirement, so it was, it's by the way, 15 consecutive years. Wow. Yeah, it was very serious. They, I, they clearly really wanted Alabama people to benefit from the commercial setup of this medical market, but which is great. I, I love stimulating local economies with cannabis. I can't think of a, a greater industry to do that. But um, apparently on some of the applications, there were, there were residents who were very permanent in that they were no longer alive. No way. Mm-hmm. So I feel wow. like this is like some, that's like some old school stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming those are some of the, the wide swaths of applications that just got bounced. Wow. So pretty huh. crazy. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Wow. So tell, tell me how this fits into the South. What do you think about this? Well, I was looking like from a population perspective, right? I think Alabama is something like 5 million people. Mm -hmm. And then Georgia is like 10 million people. Um, Georgia has about 26,000 patients, which is significant. And I think that's similar to Louisiana Mm -hmm. in like the the mid-20s. so if, if Georgia's, you know, 2x, I mean, obviously every market are, you know, these are all different in yep. the way, like, the conditions are different, mm-hmm. doctor recommendations are different. So it's not necessarily, like, an apples-to-apples apples population to patients. Um, I mean, just look at Florida, right? I mean, it's closing in on a million patients, 825,000, I think, right now. In yeah. Florida. You can track the patient counts uh, publicly in Florida, and they're still going up. Still going up, right. Uh, I do wonder, you know... Florida will be interesting because the patient counts have been going up for so long and it is a huge state for tourism. So there's that, but in California, there were so many medical patients by the time our adult use market opened that you didn't see like the step change, like in Missouri, right? You didn't see like the three to seven X in every jurisdiction. So it could be a little bit of a, I mean, when Florida goes adult use someday, I mean, we know truly have just funded the ballot thing even further this week. I heard like another half million. Yeah. It's like f- almost 40 million into that initiative. So we'll see. Um, that's a tough road to hoe because you need over 60% of the vote to get it through. So um, where I'm going with that is that there is the massive tourism piece to Florida. So that does help in terms of that. But but like Alabama, you pointed out, they have a, well, you didn't say the numbers yet. Did you say the numbers of the patients per just dis- uh, Yeah. Yeah, well, Georgia has 26,000. What is Al- does Alabama have patients right now? Well, they have, or sorry, Louisiana. Sorry. Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana has, you had a great stat of patients per dispensary on that. Oh, yeah, Louisiana, it's, it's pretty wild. So it's roughly, you know, the 23,000 or so patients. There's only 10 dispensaries in Louisiana. Yeah. Right, so the, the patients per dispensary is 2,000. 300 ish, and uh, Louisiana is estimated to do 100 million in sales. So, I mean, it's a good proxy. Right? It's a great for proxy. Alabama, although Alabama will have more dispensaries with you know, almost 40 dispensaries versus the 10 in Louisiana. So, the way the Louisiana dispensaries work, it's really interesting. And I'm pretty sure you do not have to, ha- to be a resident to get a medical card in Louisiana. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, think about Jazz Fest. And so, but the way it works is you go into this is like, I can't, I gotta go back to Louisiana, um, for many reasons, but they, um, apparently you go in to the dispensary and you have like a little, like a uh, menu, like a paper menu and like a golf pencil and you check off what you want. It's like a dim sum or. Yes. Like Just like. She or whatever. Right? Yes. Yeah. So you like check it off with your like little golf pencil and then give it in and then it'll be ready for you in 24 hours. So it's not immediate. But, you know. You need a 24-hour cool-down period <laughs> to make sure to you make know sure. do it. Yeah. Like, oh, that was a little crazy. I'll pull back on the, the gelatinous uh, cubes. Yeah. In order. Yeah. But I think it's very, like, I don't think it's very brand-forward for that reason. You're not seeing, like, you know, Kiva or anything like that. But it's, I thought that was really interesting. And uh, I don't know. How do you Lu- submit the paper? You go to the dispensary, yeah. you submit it, and then you leave. Yeah, it's like and then come and back. Cleaning yeah, and you show or like that. a prescription back in the day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, right, right. Dropping the prescription off. Yeah. So huh. interesting, right? That is interesting. But uh, 
I do think it's smart of Louisiana. I mean, Louisiana's uh, been really smart about how they attract people to, you know, the city and of uh, New Orleans. And I always say I like that they let you carry your drink out of the bar. And so you can take it on your way to another bar. And I actually think that's a healthy thing because then nobody's like chugging the drink to get out of the bar. You just take it with you. I've never been to Louisiana. What? Yeah, no, no space camp. Time to go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's the, that's the scoop with Alabama. Yeah. So <clears throat> looking at the map or Louisiana, uh, looking at the map, you know, you've got Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and then on the West of all of this is Texas. And I know, you know, Texas the South. Yeah. Somewhat. Right. But yeah. it is insane to me that Texas, uh, uh, you know, relatively progressive state in some ways. Yes. Uh, is so behind on this stuff. And just recently, you know, they tried to expand the program from this extremely limited structure with, what, three licensed companies that can produce almost like hemp-based mm -hmm. products. It's mm -hmm. almost like the Delta 8, Delta oh. 9 hemp, right, where it's uh, on a weight basis. So gummies, but they, they have to um, create these stores, and then they have to move all the inventory back mm -hmm. to distribution. They can't leave the the product and so there's this whole mm -hmm. like issue with logistics mm -hmm. it's crazy right and so why is it that the set the traditional south you know markets like when 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 i first got into this category i was like Yo, you'll never see something in mississippi you know you'll never see something in alabama and here we are talking about it right but texas is just completely stuck i mean is it go goes to, does it go back to the whole texas is like a microcosm of America, like you can't get anything done because mm -hmm. it's just like the competing sides. It's a state too big. Like California is huge. I don't know. Um, that feels also stuck. I think Texas has somebody who's uh, pretty opposed to it and it's the lieutenant governor. Oh. Um, and so I think that was um, some substantial blocking of opening up of the conditions. They had just tried to expand the conditions and that got ultimately shut down. Um, and the way that works is now it won't be revisited until 2025. And so that's pretty brutal. Um, and they're showing that people in the border towns are going right across, sure. like New Mexico. And, uh, you know, it's like there any border is seeing a benefit of Texas being so constrained. And and then to the operators who exist there, same thing. There's no flower in the existing market, very limited form factors. But um, they're saying that uh, the unfortunate thing is that where those form factors are pop popping up is like the Delta 8 and the hemp-derived Delta 9. And again, like consumer confusion. And apparently these um, retail centers that, do sell the Delta 8 or Delta 9 are pretty sophisticated and, like, nice shopping experiences. Um, according to a person who we both know who lives there, he was sharing with me that um, the product is alleged to be tested in those hemp dispensaries or, like, stores, retail outlets, I guess, and um, that there is, like, a traceable supply chain. I guess hemp is grown massively in Texas and so that's just another aspect to this and so again it's like the regulators which is fine like I think my biggest concern about Delta 8 and Delta 9 is um, the misrepresentation I do think some of the products that are labeled as such are bullshit and are not really that or and or you don't know where it comes from or the cleanliness of the supply chain at least it sounds like these stores are trying to take a higher quality approach to it. But that's what happens when you have these super restricted markets. And people are just trying to find a way to gain access to what they are interested in. Yeah, when I was in Austin recently, I, I did go to one of these stores. And it was, uh, it was a prime real estate. I mean, it was yeah. right next to the Alamo Draft House mm -hmm. on Lamar. I mean... Mm -hmm. You would never see a dispensary or an adult use retailer mm -mm. Like zoned like that, right? So some some significant advantages for them too. So yeah, but it's just it's crazy, and I I, um, I know that's Austin, and uh, Austin's kind of a unique entity in in Texas, yeah. Uh, you know that regard, but it's uh, I don't know. It just points to I mean it's 
screaming into the wind, obviously. Like, you know, they need to change this stuff because that can exist. I did see a headline this week that the DEA is looking at Delta 8, Delta 9. Yep. Did you see this? Again. Uh, yeah, on a weight-to-weight ratio instead of the weight uh, THC percentage to dry flour. Yeah. But now they're saying, well, it's actually going to be like 0.1% of the w- actual weight. So, I mean, like a drink. You know, Oof, like really, yeah, that's big. Could really mess things up. I don't know the process. You know, with the d- you know, they could just be saying that. I don't know how that that happens, but that could disrupt that delta eight, delta nine, um, you know, base delta eight, delta yeah, nine market. If if that happens, that would. It's interesting because I've been so curious to watch how Minnesota goes because they've said that they'll continue to allow that through the groups that have like uh, liquor, beer, or wine licenses in the state, and a lot of like we, you know, I've I really enjoyed the ones I got from. Um, Oh, what was that cider company in Minneapolis Cider mm-hmm. Company? And uh, I got to try their um, in ca- uh, Delta 8 infused products. I really liked them, actually. And um, I don't know. I mean, so that would be a, a bit of a bum out because I thought that was a really cool way that they're going to roll that out is low potency drinks are still going to be allowed through those channels. And then you have like the program that opens up that is actual cannabis and... I was like, oh, Minnesota doing something cool. So yeah, something unique. Something yeah, unique. but if the DEA kind of trumps the local laws on that, that changes everything. Yeah. Huh, okay. We'll, see. well, anyways, the <coughs> point here, I think, is that Texas needs to, to do something. Yes. Uh, it just makes the map look strange, too, right, when you can look across the, the southern portion of the United States from California to Florida, and there's Texas which is just this Mm -hmm. complete afterthought, right? Mm -hmm. But this is great. I'm excited uh, that Alabama is here, that it's happening. I I would love to go see these dispensaries at some point and kind of see the market, maybe try some gelatinous cubes. Maybe I'll have to get out there for a uh, space camp reunion or something. (laughs) Graduating class of 1992. Like wet, hot American summer 10 years later, (laughs) (laughs) except like 20 probably or 30. Oh, yeah, more like yeah, 30. Yeah. Right. And, and way nerdier. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the High Rise Podcast, presented by Headset. For more information on Headset, visit headset.io.